This particular video session, uh, we'll be discussing the second part of the continuation of the module two. So we'll be discussing the different regions of a polygon, which are the interior region of a polygon, how to identify the exterior region of a polygon. We'll also be discussing the plane equation, which is used to determine the front face and the back face of a polygon. Now, apart from this, we'll also discuss what are the ge open geal geometric primitives that are used. To draw the different types of polygons. Okay, let us begin the session. Let us Firstly, the let session. us try to find or let us try to identify the interior and exterior region of the polygons. Okay, so to identify the interior and exterior region of the polygons, so there are two commonly used methods or algorithms. The first one we have is something called as the odd even rule, and the second one we have is something called as a non zero winding number rule. So we may want to specify a complex filled region with intersecting edges. So they may be complex objects to be filled whose edges are intersecting. Now for such shapes, it is not always clear which regions of the XY plane we should call as the interior and which region should be called as the exterior. Right? So there may be some complicated shape, something like this which is shown here. For this particular shape, it's very difficult to classify which region is interior region and which are the regions that are that can be classified as the exterior region of these particular shapes. To determine the interior and exterior region of the polygons, we have two algorithms or the two methods. The first one we have is something called as the odd even rule. And the second one we have something called as a non-zero winding number rule. Let us first see the odd even rule for determining the inside and outside of a given polygon. So in the odd even rule, what we do is we consider any point in a given a polygon and we also consider some other distant point P which is lying outside the polygon and we try to connect these two points with a line segment something like this as you can see we consider one point within the polygon okay now that point should be checked if it is interior or exterior point the point which needs to be checked we consider one point and we try to connect it to some distant point P which is lying outside and we try to draw a line segment connecting these two points. Which are the two points here? The first point is the point which needs to be checked whether it is lying within or outside the polygon and the second point is some distant point P which is outside the polygon and we try to connect these two points. And once we have drawn this line segment, we count the number of edge intersections. Okay, remember we, to determine if a point x comma y comma z is lying on a given plane is if it is lying within the the interior region of a polygon, we try to connect it to some distant point P and we draw a line segment connecting these two points and we count the number of edge intersections. If the number of edge intersection is an even number, that indicates the point is an exterior point. Okay, And if the number of edge intersections for that line is an odd number, that indicates the point which you are considered is an interior point. Let us look at this example here. Let us consider some point on the polygon. Now this point should be checked whether it is an interior point or an exterior point. We connect it using a line segment to some distant point P which is outside the polygon. And we join them using a line segment. Once we have created a line segment, we count the number of edge intersections. If the number of edge intersection is an even number, so we can conclude that particular point what we have selected is an exterior point. So you can see we have first edge intersection here and the second edge intersection here. So the total number of edge intersection is 2, which is an even number. So this particular point can be considered as an exterior point for a given polygon. So the entire region can be considered as an exterior region of a polygon. Similarly here, okay, if I consider this point here connected to some distant point P using a line segment and count the number of edge intersections. We have first edge intersection here and the second edge intersection here. The total number of edge intersection is 2 again, which is ever again an even number. So we can conclude that this particular region is an exterior region of the polygon. Let us consider one more case. Let us consider some point here and let us connect it to some distant point P with a line segment and count the number of edge intersections. If for this particular line segment, there is only one edge intersection. 
So the number of edge intersection is 1, which is an odd number. Hence, we can conclude that this particular region is an interior of a polygon. I hope it's clear. If the number of edge intersection is odd, then we conclude that the point is an interior point and that region as the interior region of the polygon. If the number of edge intersection is an even number, so we need to conclude that it is a exterior region of the polygon. That is the inside-outside test. Right? So, the inside outside test is also called as the odd parity rule or the even odd rule. So, here we need to draw a line from any position P to a distant point outside the coordinate extents of the closed polyline. That is what we have done here. We consider any point P and connect it to some external point using a line segment. That is the first step. Then we count the number of line crossings or the line segment crossings along the line. That is the number of edge intersections. If the number of segments crossed by the, this line is odd, then the point P is considered to be an interior point. Otherwise, P is an exterior point, right? So, if you consider a point P and we count the number of edge intersection, if the number of edge intersection is even, then the point P is an exterior point. If the number of edge intersection is odd, then we can call it as an interior point, right? We can use this procedure, for example, to fill the interior region between two concentric circles or two concentric polygons with a specified color. Okay, there may be some cases where we want to fill the region between two concentric circles or two concentric polygons. So we can use this procedure to determine which is the interior region of the polygon and which is the exterior region of the polygon using this inside out as outside test, which is also called as the odd parity rule or the even odd rule. Now let us proceed to the next method or the next algorithm that is used to determine the interior and exterior region of the polygon. The second method we have is something called as a non-zero winding number rule. Okay, so in this particular non-winding, uh, non-zero winding number rule, what we do is, suppose we have given a polygon something like this, we try to assign directions to the edges. Okay, we start from the first edge, uh, first vertex that is A from A to B, we have one direction, then from B to C, C to D, D to E, E to F, F to G, and back from G to A. So we basically assign directions from one vertex to the next vertex. We assign directions to the edges there. Then we repeat the same procedure what we had done earlier. We consider any point P within the polygon. This point needs to be checked whether it is an interior point or an exterior point. So whatever point that we have considered, we try to connect it to some distant point which is exterior or which is lying outside the polygon. Okay, we connect these two points using a line segment. Then we find how many edges are intersecting it and what is the direction of the edges. Observe, unlike the even odd rule where we just count the number of edge intersection, here that is not the reason, here that is not the condition here. We also need to determine the direction of these edges. So, we considered some point P on the polygon and some other distant point. We connected them using a line segment. Now, we find the intersection of this line segment with the edges and we check what is the direction of these edges. Okay. So, whenever we are moving from this particular point, if the direction is from left to right with respect to this line, we subtract 1. And if the direction is from right to left, with respect to this particular line segment, we add 1 to it for the winding number. We initialize a variable called as a winding number. We initialize it to 0. So whenever the line segment connecting a point P and some distant point encounters an edge which is moving from left to right, we subtract 1 from this winding number. And whenever there is an edge intersection which is moving from right to left, we add plus 1 to it, the winding number. And at the end, we find the total value of the winding number. If the total value of the winding number is a non-zero, that indicates the point is interior to the polygon. If it yields a value of equal to zero, that indicates the point P is exterior to the polygon. Let us consider this point P, which is connected to a distant point using a line segment. Let us count the winding number. What is the total value of the winding number? Initially, the winding number should be set to zero. So we start from here. What is this? Here we have the first edge intersection which is moving from C to D, which is moving from left to the right. So we subtract 1 from the winding number variable. Now the value of winding number is 0 minus 1, which is minus 1. Then we proceed. We observe that there is one more edge intersection. Now the edge 
the direction is from A to B, which is from right to left with respect to this particular line segment. Okay, so we need to add one to the winding number. The previous value of winding number was minus one. We need to add plus one to it. So what is the conclusion? Total value of winding number it is equal to zero. Since it is equal to zero, we determine that this particular point is lying exterior to a given polygon. I hope it is clear. So this region is an exterior region with respect to the polygon. Let us consider the similar point. One more point here, P. Let us consider co connected to some distant point. Using a line segment, and let us apply the same rule. Okay, so we are moving from here to here. So whenever we are proceeding, we observe that the line segment, uh, the it's it, the edge intersection, edge is direction is moving from B to C, which is from right to left. So we add one. We proceed further. We also observe that there is one more line segment which is moving from right to left again. So we add once, once again. So the total value of the winding number will be. Non-zero, it will be plus two. Right here, we are moving from right to left. Similarly, here we are also moving from right to left. So the total value of the winding number will be plus two, which is non-zero. It can also be minus two also. If you value other than zero, if you get for the winding number, you can consider that point to be an interior point. That is what they have specified. Okay. So what is the procedure? So the winding number rule counts the number of times that a boundary of an object winds around a particular point in the counterclockwise direction, termed as the winding number. We need to initialize the winding number to zero, and again imagining a line drawn from any position p to a distant point beyond the coordinate extends of the object. That is what we have done in both these cases. We considered any point p. We connected using a line segment to some distant point. What is the next step? The line we choose must not pass to any end point coordinates. The line that we have chosen it should not pass to any of these vertices. That is a condition that we need to follow. As we move along the line from position P to a distant point, we can count the number of object line segments that cross the reference line in each direction. As we move along the line from a P to the distant point, we count the number of object line segments that cross the reference line in each direction. Let us. Consider this point again. So we need to start from this point towards the exterior point. So I move, we move from here to come across the first edge intersection. As you can see, and I'm moving from this direction to here. So this segment is moving from right to left. So we add a plus one to the winding number, and we are moving further. This line is moving from left to right. We subtract one. The total value of the winding number will be plus one minus one. That will be equals to zero. Hence, this region will be considered as an exterior region, or this point will be considered as an external point. Similarly, here we consider this point P. We move along the direction of the external point, and we count the number of edge intersections and their direction. Okay, as we are moving from point P to the exterior point, we encounter first edge intersection, which is moving from left to right. So we subtract one from the winding number. Again, we move further. Again, we subtract one because this line segment is also moving from left to right. So total value of the winding number will be minus two, which is again a non-zero value. So we add one to the winding number every time we intersect a segment that crosses the line in the direction from right to left, and we subtract one every time we intersect a segment that crosses the line from left to right. If the winding number is non-zero, the point P is considered to be an interior point, else point P is taken to be an external point. So these are the two methods for identifying the interior and exterior region of the polygons. Okay, one of the very important topics. So you may get a question. Explain the two methods to determine the interior and the exterior region of the polygons. Right. So we'll have to draw these diagrams and explain. 